All right, what's up, guys? Uh, we are at the Nurburgring Grand Prix version. Uh, honestly, don't really know the track. Kinda, but not really. <clears throat> so, this video default weather 78 degrees, tracks 112. Um, so, this video is going to kind of be about learning the track as well as the setup. I'm just going to go with the Phillip Island. I did, like we talked about in the forums, I put one more click of wing on this compared to what I've shared in the forums, hole two. So, I think just thinking about it, that'll probably be a pretty good setup for here. Well, let's see what we got. I'm really just going to try and ease into it. Uh, take my time, slowly build up my speed, all that fun stuff. Yeah, this is all brand new to me. Like, I mean, when I say I kind of know the track, like I played it like on Forza or something like five years ago, so I really don't know what's going on right now. <laughs> I was setting up for a right-hander there, and we're going left. So this is going to be a full-blown learning experience. The bummer though, there's not a single car on track and already getting frames per second jumps, which is, in my honest opinion, utterly ridiculous, but hopefully uh, DX11 takes care of that, because I can only imagine what this is like with 30 cars on track. If I'm stuttering by myself, I don't know. Doesn't really uh, do it for me. Track's pretty awesome as far as I'm big on elevation changes, and this definitely has elevation changes. Oh, all right, we're gonna go straight. Slow you up a bit. Yeah, frames per second are just all over the place right now. And like right here, when we make this turn, this is when I really notice it. Drops all the way down to like 78 from 100. That's enough talking about that. Let's focus on the driving right now. It's, but that's what the bummer is, is you want to focus on the driving, but you keep getting distracted by these frame drops. Uh, kind of makes it hard to focus on the driving. Definitely gonna have to turn off some trackside objects, I think. Probably cap my frames at like 80 or something, too. Just really hope DX11 makes this all go away. Yeah. A little too fast. Alright, well, we're gonna bring her in the pits. I'm gonna make some graphics adjustments because it's just, at this point, too distracting for me right now, obviously, because that's all I've talked about. 
Ooh. Let's see what we can do here real quick. Completely nerf it. This down to two. Good number. Here I was born, so I'll go with it. Alright, let's see if we can focus on some driving. Tough corner here with that big drop right there. Really got to wear her down. Right now I'm just really paying attention where I'm braking and I'm going to try and move up the braking points each lap until I find that sweet spot. Not many corners like that first one in racing. If anything, the first corner pops into my head is a corkscrew at Laguna Seca. Just that big elevator. How far out can we cheat here? Ooh, you can cheat pretty big there. Let the car go out pretty wide. Keep it in third through here. Almost keep it in third through here, but I think I need to go down to second, but we'll see. Eh, nah, third works. Maybe keep it in fourth through there. Car handled the curb pretty well there. Pretty much just drove over it.
Wow. <laughs> you can really cheat there. Oh, Irie, seeing your inconsistent 1Xs. Will they ever make sense? Yeah, pretty wide there. Yeah, I'll keep it in four through here this time. Yeah, there we go. Tried to break in the hundred board, maybe just a little too late there. Car does handle that curb awfully nicely. Yeah, definitely need to go down second gear there. I'm gonna try in third, but it just didn't work out. Here, you can get away with third. So, as I'm starting to get my braking points figured out, now I'm trying to figure out where I want to hit apexes on corners. How is that not a 1x? I swear. So I just got done with Interlagos and they're like two insanely chintzy 1x's you get there and then you can just drive your car off the track here and not get a 1x. Like they really... Yeah. I'm not even gonna rant. Is what it is. You just gotta, I guess, you just find the limits at any given track and uh, learn them, and there you go. It's the same for everybody, so no sense in complaining about it. I just wish there was some more logic involved, is all, or at least a description. I mean, one of these days, iRacing is really gonna have to write a manual on why they do what they do, because it's starting to get so convoluted. And you basically have to be a member for like two years and you still don't even know what's going on. You just pick things up here and there if you're fortunate enough to read a certain thread at a certain time instead of just having like a manual you can go to that where iRacing explains their whole process. I, that that kind of stuff's always just really boggled my mind with iRacing. If you're just going to have a business like this, you really should be doing the, your utmost to make sure it's clear and understandable to the people that are paying a good amount of money for it. Yeah, so I'm breaking about the 100 marker there. 
Just having a little fun there. Broke too late. So right now, I'm not so much looking at breaking markers. I'm looking at like patches in a row. Like there's a gray patch right there. And that's where I've been using for a breaking marker. But obviously that didn't work that time. Three focus. Three focus. We still got a shot at it. It's nice though that when you go over that uh, chicane there, it doesn't completely destroy the car. Alright, let's see if we can do like a couple more uh, decent laps, bring it in, check the tires, see where the pressures are at. Yeah, I'm probably breaking about 140. Yeah, there's no breaking markers, so you kind of just, it's more by feel. Get that middle to late apex. And a second mid to late apex here, it's getting a little loose on me. Here, breaking about ten, I don't know, five to ten meters before the cone, somewhere in that area. No break marker there, just kind of by feel. Later apex is going to be better there, but you can't let the car go out wide. Here, kind of breaking where this curb starts, like right there on the left. Get down to second gear. I think you just really want the car to hug that white line all the way around there, and then you can drive in the dirt out there. It's all right. Up here, fourth gear. I don't even think you need to brake. Just getting some of the curbs, seeing what the car does. I'm not sure if you want to go over the curbs or not yet. Here, breaking about 120. I really do like these curbs here, though. Pretty, uh... Pretty uh, forgiving. Up here, breaking, let's call it 110. Curb, get all that curb. Car handles it nicely. Here's no braking marker, so I'm braking right there. Trying to hug this white line. So, let me point out where I'm going to hit the gas, because that's what I was kind of thinking about. So, when I'm coming around that corner, see whatever this is, the blue glass right there? I think that's when I'm going to start really focusing on getting on the throttle. Until then, I'm going to be patient, but once the nose is pointed at that part, you'll notice next time we go around, that's when I'm going to want to get on the gas. So, again, breaking here around 140, 135. out wide, get that middle old apex. See, how much of this can we cut? Yeah, I didn't really cut it, but I'm wondering. Because the more you can cut that inside apex, the better off your right curb looks pretty forgiving as well. Again, about 10 meters before those cones, maybe more like five. And a second, get a little bit of grass. Coming up here, breaking where this gray curb with the black stripe starts. See if we can keep it on the white line a little bit better this time. Still carries a little bit too much speed on entry, but it was better. I'm going to do fourth gear. We won't do curbs this time. See what happens. I had a little curb, but catch probably all that curb without a problem. Up here, we'll break around 110, 115, 120 actually. Gear, it's nice and easy on the brakes. Check our speed a little bit. Again, up here, breaking right around 110. Probably too aggressive on that first car, kind of through line. All right, so now when we're coming around here, you're going to see that blue glass I was talking about right there. So when that nose points at it, that's when you're pretty safe to get back on the gas. Two, minute one, 
Let's see if we can do a decent lap here. I really want to make sure you have all your braking done before you do your ma major part of your turn in so those front tires are just getting as much grip as possible. Alright, let's see how much of this we can cut. Alright. Finally found an off track. <laughs> See, they're almost broke at the cones, and I think I actually can break at the cones once I get a little bit more comfortable. Just really get it in there. How much of that can we cut? Oh, all of it. No 1x there for driving on grass. Try and get as wide an entry as possible. Just hug that white line. See, okay, now what I need to do there find another point where my car is pointing at something I can get on the gas. We're going to use a lot of curb here. Eh, it kind of unsettles it when it comes back down, so maybe maybe not getting that much curb is a good idea. Let's check our speed a little bit. Starting to, starting to get a little rhythm going here. Come here and try and not get so much initial curb. Breaking a little bit closer to 110. Up, oh, wrong gear. Forgot to downshift one more time. Alright. Actually, I want to figure out one more thing and then. So, again, we're coming around here. Seeing that glass, getting on the gas. Hoping that black flag clears because I don't feel like lifting. Yeah, y'all. Try and break at the cones this time, see what happens. Ah, yeah, easy peasy, I can even break a little bit deeper in that. Messed up that corner, I think it's turned in too early. That corner, if you really want to be safe, I think you should break at the uh, green. Okay, so. See where the nose is pointing, where that world championship, or whatever that is, the WC sign, that little green strip, I think that's what I'm going to cue on on to get back on the gas for that uh, part of the track. So those corners you have to be patient with this, I really like doing stuff like that, wait until I get to that one point and then... And you know for sure you can get back on the gas without it pushing out wide. Now I'm gonna do like one more hot lap, and then I'll bring it in and check the tires. breaking a little too late and you back it up to like probably 115 110 there so again going with that philosophy of being patient waiting for your target waiting 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 get on the gas and then once you start to figure that out you can maybe figure out all right maybe I can get on the gas just a little bit before that car is pointing to there but that's always like your general rule of thumb and a good guideline Get that car as far on the left as I can. Again, you want to get wide entry so you can get as nice big arc as you can. Same thing with this corner, nice wide entry. Yep. Messed up the entry on that. Just too aggressive with my braking. How is that not a 1x? <laughs> 
So now we're breaking about 25% into those cones and it's still pretty good. Probably break halfway in those cones and be safe. Mid to late apex there. You go out that far, you'll get a 1x. And then again, see the grass right there and then I'm breaking. Now we're going to wait for that other grass strip. Wait for it, wait for it, wait now. Yep, that works nicely. I do love the uh, flow of those two corners right there. We just keep it in third, barely have to get on the brakes. Just got a nice flow to it. All right, so here it's break at 115 and see how this works. That's beautiful. I think 115's our breaking point there. That breaking point's again more by feel. So I'm starting to feel like I can break, get on the gas just before we're looking at that blue glass over there. I want to get a clean lap in here before I bring it in. Still, that was, I was getting closer to midway of those cones, but I can still break a little bit later. No one X there. Okay, we're going to go grass to grass again. Let it float out, come back for that double apex. I like that. Maybe just get a little bit of the red and white curb, not get up onto the gray stuff. Here, again, a little bit more of the red and white, take all the blue. Yeah, and then I just, again, I sort of like this section. Nice natural flow. Here, we'll break it 115. Ah, I don't want to get that first curb. It just unsettles the car too much. Just pushes out wide, and then you can't get a good line for the second part of the corner. Pretty much sliding all around that corner because I just bad entry. Two, minute zero. So I'm going to pit this lap. Getting close to breaking at 125 there now. That was probably too deep, as you can see. So there, that was past halfway through those cones. So I'm thinking just past halfway through those cones is where you want to break for that corner. That felt pretty good. Yeah, the gas too soon. I wasn't paying attention to my second uh, target. Liking the track though. Oh, broke way too late. Definitely digging the track. Car's gonna need more rotation though. Front end just not. Same thing as a Phillip Island. The front end just low speed grip's not there right now.
Let's practice pit entry. There's like two white lines. I was just breaking at the second white line. First off, that left front's cooking. So, I'm, my targets right now are like 190. So, that should bring it down to 190. We'll just leave that alone right now. We'll go up one click right there. Now, I'm just going to do some experimenting with this caster. I want to decide just first, I want to see how far it can go. Alright, so we're going to do pretty big moves on this. I want to go up to like 7.9. Put a full degree more caster in it. So the caster has to do with the... Uh, let's get a picture of the car. Alright, so the caster has to do with this part right here. Now, if you have zero caster, your shock is going to travel straight up and down on this axis, like perpendicular to the ground. You put, so what we have, we have positive caster. So positive caster means that this, sh the, the, um, angle of the shock basically of the wheel travel now goes back like this so that's positive caster negative caster is if it's going like that you just don't do negative caster um so positive caster so now you're leaning that back so when when the wheel's going it's not going straight up and down anymore it's kind of going back like that and that actually creates more stability if you think about like a shopping cart where its caster is actually positive or actually negative the wheels just want to like flop around all over the place. Well, if you lean that back, that angle back, those wheels would want to stay straight more. So it adds more stability. But in addition to that, it also changes the dynamic camber of the car. So as you're turning the wheel, so we have camber, right? And our camber is positive. So the, the, the bottom of the tire is actually you know, pointing in that direction, or if it was flat, it'd be like that, but it's like that. So let's say we're turning to driver's left, so we're turning over here, right? Well, as the wheels turn, this angle actually increases, so you get more positive caster in there. And what's really neat is on the inside, you have positive caster going like this, right? Well, when, the wheel, when you're turning over here, this positive caster actually starts going negative, so it starts flattening out the inside tire, which gives you a better contact patch, and that creates more caster out here, which creates a, uh, a you know, it gives you a little bit more bite, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, when you do that, though, it's a lot harder to turn the wheel. The wheel gets a lot heavier. I don't know if you've ever ridden a dirt bike compared to, like, a, a custom chopper where they just have tons of rake in them. It's really hard to turn the wheel. Dirt bike's more up and down. It's easier to turn the wheel. So those are the uh, two different ways it affects the car. So we just put a whole nother degree of it in it so we leaned it back just a little bit more instead of being more up and down so i'm just seeing how that affects the feel of the car and the low speed stuff see if it gives us more grip so i just feel like i've been missing something the last couple of weeks when it comes to this low speed turning ability of the car Alrighty, feel the steering's heavier. It 
subconscious went down to second gear there, and I think I actually like it. Car just felt like it rotated better. I put more rear wing in it because I mean there's no real top speed section. I don't even think I get to six gear like once coming up here. Other than that, it's pretty not a lot of high speed section drafting comes into effect here. Like here's the longest straightaway. And we're gonna get into six gear for just a couple seconds. I do feel like that front end's trying to get around the corner better. Grip a little bit more, not push out. But that was with brand new tires after my very first laps on the track, so it's really hard for me to have confidence, and then that's what's happening. It's not just me more used to the car and track, so. I do feel like the rear needs more grip, so we'll just put more wing on it. Yeah, they go into second gear for that. that. Acts like as a governor, making sure I'm going the right speed through there. It's got good rotation. Just carried a little bit too much speed in there. I'm just going to go ahead and make that wing change. So I just, there's no reason to be running a two wing here at all. So let's go up, up to a four, see how that feels. Are we doing anything else? This corner's hard because we're there. We're there, pit. <laughs> Let me try this again. That corner's hard because of where the A pillar is. You can't see the corner really at all or the apex. So it's definitely one of those do it by feel corners. That just takes practice and repetition until you get the muscle memory down. And it comes rather natural. I can see the BMW doing pretty good here. Seems like a very BMW friendly track. I don't understand why that corner doesn't have braking markers. Oh man, that felt so good coming around that corner as far as the front end and just gripping. I think more positive casters definitely helping. Feel that more grip in the rear end. The wing. 
Oh, that feels really good, the way it wrapped around that corner. I think that's the right amount of wing. I don't feel like it needs any more. Feels like pretty good right now. Ooh, I kind of drove in there too hard, got on the gas too soon. If I didn't get on the gas too soon, it would have been a really nice corner. Yeah, it feels better now going through there. When it bounces off the curbs, the rear end doesn't want to kick loops quite as bad. Way too fast, but we're just gonna have some fun. Yee! Oh. Yeah, that feels so good around that corner right now. That's how you want a car to get around a corner like that. Just hug that white line and keep on wanting to turn around, wrap around the corner. Yeah, I'm gonna try another click of wing. So I can see the use for it in those two corners. And I'm just trying to have some fun. Alright, see what the tires are like real quick. No, oh, we'll go down one click all the way around. Click a wing. How many clicks do we have? Oh, we got a lot of clicks, don't we? Give it two more clicks. Give it a six wing, see how it feels. See, now I can get on that curb, and when I come off the curb, it doesn't unsettle the car as much because we just have more uh, wing, which just means more force pushing that tire into the ground. Now here's where we're going to see the wing differential. Look at the relative. We're starting to lose a little bit of time, but it's not nearly... Uh, bad enough to offset what we're, we're gaining everywhere else around the track and confidence and speed through the corners. Like right there, I mean look how much time we just gained going through there. Although I did kind of not do very good with that corner on the uh, relative lap.
Okay, there I'm I'm getting to the point of breaking at the end of those cones now. Yeah, be patient, 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 wait for the grass, there's the grass. some curb, have some confidence in the car's not going anywhere. Ooh, that felt good. I think I'm going to start going to second gear there just to make sure I uh, govern my speed a little bit more. It's a little trick I like to do. A little bit of dirt there, don't have to worry about uh, 1x. With this more wing, I can start braking a little bit deeper, and the car has a little bit more uh, grip, so it's got more stopping power now. And that was nice because I kind of didn't turn in as early as I usually do there, so I got a uh, late apex and was able to get on the gas a little bit sooner. Daydreaming. And I finally found a 1x for that corner. Feels really good through there. I don't want to lift. Ooh, alright, there's a black flag. Note taken. Better to find that out now than in a race. So again, I'm going to let it swing out a little bit wider and then come in for this late apex and just get a lot better exit off the corner, which might help you to make a pass up here because I don't know how easy or hard passing is at this track. kind of looks like it's going to be interesting. This is a corner where people can just overcook it and just take you out so easy right there, so you got to really watch out for that in the race. Wasn't looking for my target or anything there, just impatient.
Daydreaming. Back it down. Back it down. Kinda of feel like I'm overdriving right now, so I'm gonna try and calm down and back it up a bit. Try and start driving a little bit smoother. That almost feels like you're rallying through there. Yeah, I think third gear is actually a better way to go through there as opposed to second. Happy with this set, guys. One minute fifty nine point five.
starting to do with that corner what I'm doing last corner wider entry get that later apex so I can get a better line off the corner that section is just a blast I'm really starting to like this track Yeah, I was trying to break later and I should have. Alright, bringing her in. So there's one white line. The second white line is where I'm breaking for pit entry here. Just so you guys know. Check the tires. All right, they're down the 187 range, but it felt good, so. My experiment with that later, but I think that's enough for one video. It's a pretty solid baseline, so. Hope you guys enjoy it. Maybe make some improvements to your driving style on it. And, uh, yeah, no, I'll see you next time. Have fun racing.